Jackie Chan as a performer is one who I've who had been previously ah, it's forever. Jackie Chan as a performer is one who is frequently compared with Buster Keaton, and as I have mentioned in reviews I've done elsewhere of uh, Police Story, Charlie Chaplin. Well, Mr. Vampire, a martial arts horror comedy film produced by Jackie Chan's friend and fellow alumni of the Five Little Fortunes, Sammo Hung, is what I would probably describe as the Hong Kong equivalent of the Abbott and Costello meets blank movies. Now, in advance, I will apologize by saying that I am going to attempt to pronounce the names of the cast and crew to the best of my ability, but I may mispronounce names. Some of this is due to unfamiliarity with the language. Some of this is due, I do set up to a slight speech impediment I have related to basically the way my tongue works, which affects the pronunciation of certain phonemes. So I'm going to apologize in advance for that. Mr. Vampire follows a Taoist priest. Master Cao, played by Lam Ching Ying, is two students, Man Shui, played by Ricky Hui, um, and Xiao Seng, played by Qin Xiu Ho. When Cao is called in to assist with the reburial of the father of a rich businessman, Mas uh, Master Yam, they discover that due to the fortune teller who picked the gravesite, basically dicking over Master Yam's father, who had in turn dicked over the fortune teller before that, combined with Yam's father dying angry, Yam's father has become a vampire. And when the attempts to contain the vampire fail and it breaks loose, Cao, Man Choi, and Chao Sang must hunt down the vampire and limit the damage that it causes. Chao Sang and Man Choi are basically our Bud Abbott and Lou Costello analogs, respectively, with the former being the self-confident bossy character, the latter being the goofball, and both being funny men kept in line, or some form or another, by Cow. It is to the film's credit that it does a good job of basically juggling these characters' um, antics with some legitimately creepy moments involving the main vampire. Now, where the film drags is where it introduces a subplot with a female ghost, played by Wang Xiu Feng, who becomes infatuated with with uh, Chao Sang, and a, and who risks killing him by draining his chi. That's enough of a story to carry its own film, and it has. That movie exists. It's called Chinese Ghost Story. It's directed by Choi Hark and is amazing, and it's available for streaming right now as of this release. And on top of that, Xiu Feng and Su so Ho have really strong chemistry enough to carry a separate film in their own right. Here, though, it feels like padding, as the plot comes up at a bad time in the film, where the vampire is on the loose and Man Choi is fending off the onset of vampirism from an attack by that vampire with the assistance of Cow. When the jokes work, though, they really work, and this is all combined with some really slap, a snappy patter and some very well choreographed slapstick. I, like, I've generally noticed with Monster Martial Arts comedy films, the two things they do really well. They do slapstick spectacularly, and they do really solid patter. And on top of this, the direction of the horror scenes, particularly those with like lots of Zhang Shi, are done very well and keep the Zhang Shi from becoming laughable and, make, and keep them feeling like a real sincere threat. Even if you are completely unfamiliar with what they are and how Zhang Shi work, this movie will get across very well that actually this isn't, they aren't a joke, they are something that you need to be worried about. Unfortunately, the US re DVD releases of Mr. Vampire are completely out of print because, well, it's just a shame because I would have liked this film to have gotten a nice special edition um, prestige martial arts film label release. We had various companies doing stuff like this in the past. The most recent one was Dragon Dynasty, as far as like it was a general across the board, not tied to a specific studio. One was Dragon Dynasty, which was unfortunately done by Weinstein Studios, but they generally did a decent job of having the films remastered and without adding introducing any additional edits or cuts to the film. But it also was giving money to the Weinstein, so there's that problem. However, otherwise, for all the faults of Dragon Dynasty, again, most of them tied to their ties to the Weinsteins, they never scrimped on their print runs. 
so a lot of their titles are relatively easy to get a hold of. Um, it's the same, like, you can just as easily find a copy of the Dragon Dynasty release of Police Story as you can find the Criterion Collection release of Police Story 1 and 2. Now, sadly, to my knowledge, after Dragon Dynasty went defunct several years ago, even before the whole thing with the Wine where the Weinsteins came out uh, came out in the public, we they they shut down the Dragon Dynasty line, so there is no longer any sort of prestige label for old martial arts films comparable to Shout Factory's Scream Factory line. The closest we have is Celestial Pictures has a couple has like a label for Shaw Brothers films, but that is specific to Shaw Brothers. So, unless Mr. Vampire was to be included by, say, Criterion Collection with their martial arts films releases, like A Touch of Zen or Dragon Inn, or if Arrow Films was going to, or, you know, Lorber was to include um, this film and as part of possibly a martial arts line there, I don't see this getting a, necessarily getting a quality release soon. Now, this film has received in like 2008. Eight, a Blu-ray release in Japan, but that release does not have a English subtitle option, which also serves as a barrier to importing the film because otherwise, U.S. and Japan have a common Blu-ray region. And considering the Chinese government's general coldness to horror films and particular depictions of the undead, there may be resistance on that front for this film getting a re-release as well. As far as I know, that Blu-ray release I mentioned from Japan may also be completely out of print. So keep that in mind when it comes to hunting down this film. I do hope this gets a re-release at some point in the future. I don't know when, but I hope it does get one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything.